Okay, so you should be able to see my, uh, the Jupyter Notebook uh, server. I said you can simply type Ophelia and uh, should plug in. In the, here we can go in the notebooks folder where we can see different notebooks. Um, in particular, we'll be running the PyOphelia basics. Also, uh, in the readme file, you can uh, see the same instructions that were in the in the slides that I show. So, if some some mm, if you were able to get some uh, some comments, you can look also here because the full, there are a full set of comments to set up the environment, uh, as well as the description of the various notebooks into the uh, into this folder and some useful links that uh, you could check concerning what was what's going. Uh, to, to be shown about this practical part. So I said we'll uh, uh, show this by Ophelia Basics, which is the notebook we uh, contains a set of, uh, um, a wet set of commands uh, from the uh, Py of Ophelia module and uh, provides uh, basically uh, a basic usage of uh, the most used uh, features of this, of this module. So the first, um, the first cell of the notebook uh, contains uh, the, uh, the instruction to uh, load the Ophelia module, and in particular the cube and, uh, and client class. As I said, we'll be mainly relying on the cube class, which uh, uh, provides the data cube uh, uh, abstraction as a, as a Python object. And this is important to uh, uh, re remark that this uh, re it doesn't actually mean that there's a data cube object in the notebook, but this is a reference to the server side data cube object. Um, as, as, uh, and uh, in this cube class, the uh, Ophelia operators are, are mapped as, uh, as uh, methods. And this can, can be in two, let's say, uh, in two different uh, types. There can be class methods, which uh, aren't specific to a particular object, but we re relate to the whole class. And these are used to implement all the operators which are not related to a specific cube. And uh, this could be, for example, those managing the file system, like the list operator that we saw in the, uh, in the terminal, or for loading new, new data. And this um, can be easily identified because they uh, are called by using this, uh, as in this example here, cube.cube, .cube, which means the module we import and then the specific class. The second type of, uh, of methods is the, uh, are the regular instance methods, which refer to a specific object. And uh, these are used for all the operators, uh, which apply to a specific cube, like, for example, to perform a data re a reduction and, uh, and a subset. And we'll see this uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Yes, see there are some... Comments. Okay, so once uh, this first comment here, this cube set client is used to set up the uh, connection with uh, with the server side. Uh, with this comment, we can we can specify the uh, the connection arguments. For example, the username and password of the of the user, uh, the uh, IP address, and the and the port of the of the server. And this is very useful in the case we are running, for example, this notebook. In our in our local desktop machine, we want to connect like on a on a on a remote ins installation on a on a HPC cluster. In the particular case uh, of the container, everything is installed into the container, and we set up this uh, the the default arguments into the environment. So with this read and go to do, um, the set client method is actually inheriting this information from the from the uh, environment variables. And so once we run this. This will establish a connection with the server, and it will show something like this, um, with some information from the from the last session. Uh, in uh, in uh, your case, it should be a uh, um, there, there will be less information because I already tested this this notebook uh, uh, this morning. So here I have my my previous session and also the last produced cube from my previous session. Uh, if we see this method, it it, it means that the uh, connection was established uh, su successfully. And so from now on, we can uh, sub submit the comments to the, to the server and, uh, and the PyOphelia Pio module will, uh, will handle the, uh, the response from the server side and uh, keep track of the, of the virus data cubes. 
Well, the first step, um, we would uh, we should need to load one of the NetCDF files that we downloaded, and uh, and then we can run some some processing on the of, on these NetCDF files. Uh, to do so, we should uh, first of all check the the content of of this NetCDF file to un to uh, understand how we can uh, import it. Uh, this could be done, for example, with the ncdump uh, command from the NetCDF library. But in Ophelia, we provide this explore nc method which allows us to uh, read the metadata inf information of this, uh, this file. So in this case, we are opening the taskmax file. This is a ZNIP5 dataset uh, produced by SMCC with a CSM model. And as we uh, see, it contains in particular the taskmax uh, variable, which is the uh, uh, maximum temperature uh, uh, of the maximum near uh, surface air, air temperature, and this depends on time, lat, and longitude dimensions. And we can see there are, there are also the coordinate variables associated with those dimensions to this uh, SDF file. Uh, starting from this information, we can then uh, create uh, uh, our first data cube from the SDF file, and this can be done with the input NC method. Here we can uh, we can specify the path of the of the file that we want to uh, import. And uh, so basically, we can, this is uh, the one in the OPU folder, the taskmax file. And here we can specify the measure that we want to, which is the variable that we want to, to import, in this case, taskmax. And we are specifying uh, a simplicity dimension time. Uh, similarly to the slides I showed earlier, we want to uh, organize the, the data according to the time dimension so that basically we have uh, uh, time time series in the in the binary array store inside the inside the fragments, and we are uh, loading the, the data with a single core. The description uh, option is uh, is useful. Uh, we will see this later because it uh, assigns sort of a uh, human readable information to this particular data cube. Uh, one important thing here is to mention is that we what we. If we are this import uh, operation, we are not lo loading anything into the notebook, but we're uh, uh, submitting a request to the server side to load this uh, this data on the IO and an analytics server running inside the container. As we can see, this uh, this import took uh, less than one second. The file uh, is a, is in fact not very big, but we can also mm, try to run the same command with uh, an increased number of of, of cores, like for example four. I would see that the execution time would be uh, smaller. In this case, it's like uh, less than half. Of course, we're using four cores, so we could have uh, the, the execution time would, would have been uh, smaller. But the, the let's say the file is very very small, so uh, it's not possible to decrease it very very much by uh, scaling up with the number of cores. Of course, if, if instead of using this uh, 30 megabytes files, if if it would have been let's say a much bigger file, uh, then we could. Uh, scale the number of, uh, of, of cores in order to par better parallelize the data reading. And uh, this can be done, the uh, number of cores can be increased, of, uh, of course, and uh, up to the, let's say, the, re the, the re 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 resources we have available, but um, on the other side, also up to the number of fragments which are, uh, uh, which we are, Defining to import this this uh, this data uh, by default, the number of fragments which is taken is the one associated with the uh, most external dimension, which in this case is the latitude dimension. And we can see here this is 48. So by default, we create 48 fragments. Another thing to mention is that we didn't, as you can see, we didn't uh, specify the explicit dimensions into this uh, command because uh, by a default, all those which are not implicit will be considered as ex explicit dimension and will uh, keep the same order as in the netcdf file. As said, now we can uh, we can uh, check uh, the the cubes that we have uh, loaded in the in the in the virtual uh, file system, the cube space. As I said the cube space. Uh, um, is able to uh, uh, manage the different data cubes, which are the objects uh, containing both the data and the metadata. And this can be grouped together as uh, containers, uh, which group a set of uh, data cubes which have some, some common properties, like, for example, the same 
dimension uh, values or the same grids. And then there are these virtual folders which allow to organize multiple containers uh, within folders and folders can also be nested to create sort of a, a tree uh, structure. Here you can specify the, um, you can use this instance, this uh, class method, the cube does cube uh, uh, list method. And by specifying the option level two, we'll see a certain uh, uh, set of information in the in the list, and here we see uh, that okay, this is basically. We can try to reduce this. We can see uh, that we have imported two data cubes. Uh, the first one is associated to the input done with one core, and the second one with the input we executed with four cores. Uh, the data cube uh, PID is uh, basically is basically an identifier which is used by the by the system to uh, uh, track the data cubes, but uh, through Pi of Ilya, this this would be uh, say, uh, transparent. We don't need to uh, remember this information because we will access the uh, MyCube variable when we want to to work on this on this particular data cube. Uh, the so this this, uh, this uh, list command contains uh, several uh, supports several options. So, for example, we can increase the uh, level. Uh, in order to show more information by specifying, for example, number three. And we'll see that it also shows now the source file from which it was imported. And every operator, so every method associated by Ophidia has uh, different options. And uh, we can um, have a look at the different options by using the uh, Python uh, inline help, uh, help command. If you run this on the list method, we'll see that there are a set of, uh, of different options and uh, he also specifies the uh, uh, what what this option refers to and the possible values he can uh, he can uh, uh, assume. So, right, for example, the level which shows the different levels of the of the visualization, but also filters to narrow down the list of uh, of cubes that will that will be shown. We can also uh, Inspect uh, the the cube structure of the from the, from the cube that we just uh, in, imported, as well as how it is uh, partitioned. We can do so by using the uh, the, cube, the instance uh, uh, info method on the MyCube uh, object. And so here we see that this uh, this uh, uh, data cube has, has been imported from the taskmax file and that uh, it is uh, um, distributed on uh, uh, 40, uh, 48 fragments. The visualization is a little bit uh, confused because I think the, I increased too much that zoom. Um, anyway, you can see that the size is about 32 megabytes and is divided in 48 fragments. And we can see the dimensions. Here we have that uh, latitude, longitude, and time. And time is the implicit dimension. We can uh, see that it's implicit because the ar array uh, flag is set to yes. So this is the dimension that we use uh, to build the uh, binary ar ar arrays. Moreover, here we can also uh, see the concept level associated to the dimensions. In particular, for the time dimension, the concept level is day because the Ophelia uh, framework is able to also read the uh, calendar metadata. And so by reading that metadata and, uh, for example, so that, that frequency value, it is able to uh, understand that the time is uh, stored as with, uh, with a daily frequency. And this will, will come handy later because uh, we can perform operation, for example, to aggregate uh, days in uh, years and months. And that information is useful to understand uh, to, which, uh, uh, to which month or year, for example, that particular time step uh, some steps uh, belong to. You see, you see it from, from some question before proceeding. Okay, so I see there are some some issues. Uh, okay, so can we import the same data twice? Yes. Uh, Basically, uh, every every data cube uh, is an uh, immutable read-only object, so you can you can load the both uh, you can load uh, several times the same the same data. Although that, that doesn't doesn't make uh, a lot of sense. This was just for say as 
uh, demonstration purposes, but basically the same, the same, uh, the same data cube will be uh, the same data will be uh, stored as two different data cubes on the, on the same system. Yes, even if they have the same name, because every data cube is uh, uh, associated to a unique I, I identifier. So the fact that uh, in, in, uh, the import, let's say the NetCDF file has the same name is not very relevant. Also because we could, for example, import the same file also with a, with a subset. And uh, like, I don't know, we could import uh, part of the spatial domain of, the, of a given file and then re-import uh, another part of the special domain of the, of the same file. And uh, so that we can, this can also be used if for we want uh, to perform import not of the, uh, of, of the, of the, of the complete file, but just a part of this file. And now in this cell, we can uh, see uh, the, the first uh, data uh, operator, which is the subset. And, uh, and here we are, uh, we're starting from the MyCube uh, data cube, which was the one we imported with the, the uh, import uh, method. And here at the subset, we can specify different uh, options. Uh, for example, the uh, di dimensions that we want to subset, latitude, longitude, and time. And then the filters, in this case, we are specifying the, the actual values of the dimensions. This is done by setting the subset type to chord. Uh, but the subset sub type could also be set to index, for example, if you want to specify the indexes instead of the actual values. And once we run this, we will see that uh, now this my cube, which is a, a second cube that we have uh, access to, uh, when running the info, we see that the, the fragmentation and the sizes have changed. In particular, we see that uh, latitude now is 18 instead of 48, and time is just 19 uh, because we uh, subsetted this part. And also, the size is, uh, is much smaller. We can see that. It is 276 kilobytes, so it's, it's very a small portion of the original uh, uh, data cube. And we can um, inspect the content of, of this data cube by using the explore method. Uh, indicator specifying limit filter equal, equal to one uh, because uh, we want to see just the first binary uh, array. If we run this, we can see that here we have this uh, a portion of the, of the table which is associated to uh, the first module and the first module that is in this subset data cube. And then there's the full list of, uh, of um, temperature values in, uh, in, in, Kelvin, uh, in Kelvin degrees. And this expert, uh, this expert method can also be used with the subset filters, uh, similar to what uh, was done in the subset, uh, uh, in the subset uh, uh, method. And this can be used to, for example, to uh, have a look just to a um, specific portion of this uh, data cube. Uh, so similar to the, to the subset, we can specify the different dimension um, and, uh, and, uh, and which parts of the dimension we want to see. In this case, we specify the indexes value. So means the first two latitude, the first four longitude, and the first four time steps. And here we can see that this is just a table with uh, a subset of this, uh, of this data cube. And this can be useful if you want to quickly inspect part of the, of the cube to see if uh, the results that we are computing like make, make sense or something is uh, okay. Um, now we can, can run the first data reduction operation by using the reduce method. Uh, in this case, we are uh, computing a maximum, but the, uh, the maximum of the time series, but uh, the, the operator supports a lot of other, a lot of other metrics. And we can see this from the documentation page. Because we have, there are different uh, options for the data reduction. In this case, we're computing the maximum. So by running this, this will produce a new data cube called MyCube3 on the, on the server side. And uh, running the info, we can uh, have a look at the, uh, the structure of this cube. Basically, now the time the dimension has been completely uh, aggregated. And, uh, and, to this, and to this end, the concept level is set to all. So this, this dimension could be considered that the effort is have been uh, completely uh, re re removed and we now have a two di dimensional cube with just latitude and longitude, which basically is a, is a, is a grid. Uh, then we can reorganize the internal structure of the data cube um, by, for example, 
uh, moving uh, the longitudinal di di dimension from an explicit dimension to an uh, implicit dimension, and this is useful uh, for uh, uh, per performance matters so that we can uh, more efficiently uh, use this, this data cube, like for example, for uh, accessing or for processing. So with this rollup method, we're basically moving uh, the most internal dimension, uh, in this case long longitude, from explicit dimension to implicit dimension. If we now expect, inspect my cube four, which is the one that we just created, we can see that in, in fact longitude has, has been set as an, as a, an array-based di di dimension. Uh, with the uh, by looking at this uh, array flag, which is now yes, time dimension is just uh, kept here for for uh, uh, historic reference, so that we know that this data could originally contain also the time di 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 dimension. At this stage, we have now created a lot of data groups, so we can uh, check this from the virtual file system by running the the cube list. Uh, we see we have different uh, data groups, and uh, we associated this dif different. Uh, uh, a description which are useful to understand the speed to which the data cube is uh, associated. So we have uh, the last one is this roll-up cube that we just run. Uh, we can also use this uh, um, uh, the data cubes we created um, to plot them, for example, into into um, um, into a into a map or a, a chart. And this can be done by using the export array method, uh, which is a queue, uh, an instance method. And this is the first time in, in this data cube that we're actually moving the, the values from the cube, uh, so from the server side to the to the notebook, to, to the client side in this case. And the in this export array, we will um, uh, have a structure which is similar to what is shown in this figure. So basically, there will be the main variable in the in the in the major uh, uh, keyword of this Python dictionary structure, and the list of dimension with all the values and the name. So we can run this and check the uh, the output has been exported. This is actually a variable, a Python variable, which is accessible from the uh, Jupyter notebook, and is a Python dictionary. We have the measure with uh, the task marks and the list of uh, uh, temperatures uh, organized according to the uh, in internal cube structure. So basically, the latitude per longitude. And then at the end of this long list, we have the dimension values with the longitude and then the list of uh, uh, the list of uh, latitude di dimensions. Sorry, it's latitude and longitude, yeah. We can use this information uh, to create uh, 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 a map from this, uh, for example, using uh, Cartopy and Matplotlib. And we can uh, ac access uh, using the dimension and the major uh, keywords, we can ac access this, uh, this dictionary and then plot this in a map, and we'll see that we will get basically a portion of the, of the, of the globe. This is basically the uh, part of the Indian Ocean. Uh, but, and uh, once this is done, we can also save the results into an SCDF file uh, by using the export NC method. Uh, we will specify simply the, the path and the, and, and the name, and this will create a, a, an SCDF file in our, in our file system if, uh, if I'm going on the... Um, uh, Jupyter Notebook browser, I can see that here there's the max nc, which is a very small file, uh, 17 kilobytes which has been created, which has the, the same re result which that was plotted in, on this map. Uh, now, let's now consider a scenario in which we would like to um, consider the whole spatial domain and not uh, the subset. In this case, we can, we can do so by starting from the or, or original imported cube, which is the, the my cube. So we don't need to re-import the data. We already have that in the uh, in-memory server. And we can run a new a subset, in this case, specifying only the time uh, dimension. Uh, we can use this uh, uh, human-readable date-time format uh, by using uh, setting the time filter equal yes. And in this case, we are uh, asking to get the, the, the full 2096 year from the 1st of December to the, so, sorry, from the 1st of January to the uh, uh, last day of the, of of, of the year, and we can see this, we now have the full spatial domain uh, for latitude and longitude, and uh, 365 values for the time dimension, which is uh, associated to uh, um, a single year. And then we run the same uh, comments on this uh, new MyCube2, so we can run the maximum, 
and roll up to uh, change the internal uh, structure. And then we can uh, reuse the plot data uh, function to plot the data we exported with export array. And here we see we have the full, the full uh, uh, spatial uh, domain, which is in this, in this map. We can do a similar um, thing also with the uh, data re reduction operation. So let's assume we want to, in, instead of computing the maximum, compute the minimum. So we can just change in the re reduce command this option. And then we have the, the, the minimum computer. We can rerun everything on the my new cube too, which is uh, the data cube associated to the uh, uh, last sub subset that we run. So the one which has the the full uh, the full map with a uh, with a single year. So by running this and uh, creating the new plot, we'll see that this now is um, is uh, as we can see this is already is still the full extent of the map, but this is um, uh, let's say um, less uh, less uh, less reddish because it's is uh, like um, lower temperature barriers, and now it's showing the uh, the minimum of the of the task max. Okay, as, as um, shown in the slide, a very interesting, uh, very in interesting um, operator is the apply, which allows uh, to run every uh, Ophelia primitive, also in a, in a, in a nested, uh, also by nesting them. In this case, we are using the predicate, uh, which uh, allows to uh, evaluate uh, an e expression and um, and we would like to uh, basically identify all the temperatures which are below a uh, uh, threshold, in this case, 273.15, uh, which basically correspond to zero uh, uh, Celsius de degrees. And this basically is applying our mask. So all the values which are below this threshold will be set to one, and all those which are bigger to zero. We can check the uh, documentation to see how this works. It's uh, some option and also explains how this can be used. And but I did this. Maybe you can uh, you can have a look at this if you if you are interested. And once we run this, we will have a new cube which are calling icing days uh, with uh, with uh, basically the various uh, masks. And then we would like to count the days below the given threshold on a yearly basis. So that means for each year we want to have we would like to know the count of the of the days which are below the threshold for every uh, point in the special domain. And this is, is basically the icing days climate index. That we're computing here, and uh, this can be done with the reduce two, which is different by the uh, from the reduce method because in this case we are uh, considering the concept level, and this is important because with concept level we can by setting this to year we are aggregating uh, data on a on a yearly basis, basis also uh, taking into consideration the uh, calendar metadata, so the data will be aggregated according to uh, uh, to which year they 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 belong to. Once we do this, we will see that now the new cube has just five values, which is one for each year uh, in the input uh, data set. We can then explore the first year because we want to show this on a, on a map with, with Cartopine. So the first year will contain uh, the, first, uh, the, the first year for this, uh, for this uh, icing, icing days, uh, the cube that we created. And we can plot this and we'll see that basically this contains the count of uh, of days which are below the threshold, we can see that near the e, e equator, this is basically zero, and close to the poles, this is uh, basic, basically all uh, all days of the of the year. Another interesting option uh, is that we can run with Avila is the time time series processing, and uh, we could um, in this case we could, for example, extract a single time time series from the data cube. Again, we can use the subset. Here we're specifying uh, the coordinates of the, of the time series we want to extract. And so we are uh, specifying a uh, given latitude and longitude point using the uh, values of the dimensions. And then we can extract the full year with this subset. And this will create this in new, um, this MyCube 2, which contains a single time series. And here we can apply another uh, primitive, which is the moving average. We can see from the documentation, moving average supports different options. We're using the uh, simple moving average in this example, which computes the mean on the previous k elements. Uh, in this case, the average is done on, uh, on the seven elements. So basically, uh, this moving average will compute the average of the current time step and the previous six time steps. 
we can run this and uh, then we can plot the moving average, uh, the, the time series from the moving average, the time series from the uh, my cube two, which is the original subsetted cube on a, on a um, line, line chart. And we can see that the moving average uh, version of this uh, time series, like uh, kind of like the smoothed version. We also see that the first uh, six points are missing because as uh, described in the documentation, uh, basically in the moving average, uh, the first k minus one elements will be set to none because there are not enough points to compute the, the uh, moving average. We can also compare uh, different time, uh, time, time series, uh, also from different cubes, uh, by using the um, intercube method that we will see in a, in a couple of couple of cells. So in this case, uh, before running uh, the before extracting the two time series, we are performing an aggregation. At, uh, at the month level by uh, using again reduce two. Uh, this, uh, by, using, by specifying this uh, month concept level, basically the data would be aggregated according to the, uh, to the information, to the um, uh, sem semantic information associated to the, to the time dimension. So the um, FIDA is able to, to handle uh, different, uh, different calendars. So it's also able to understand if, for, for example, other, uh, there's like the leap day in a, in, a, in a year, and then the days have to be associated to the, to the different months, according also to this information. Uh, starting from this average cube, then we can extract two time series. We are uh, getting the one from 2096 and the one from 2097. We can run these two, uh, and we create two new cubes with the first and second year. Uh, by looking at the second year, we we'll now we'll see this is a single time, time series, because Latin and longitude are set to one. And then we have for the time dimension 12 values, which are associated to each, to each month in the, in, the, in, the, in the given year. And we can use the intercube to perform the, perform the, the, the difference between uh, these two cubes. And this is done by specifying sub as the operation. And we're saying to, we want to subtract from the second year the, the time series from the first year data cube. And we can then uh, plot this diff Again, when we plot, we are uh, using the export array method to extract this from the data cube. And you will see the difference. Uh, this is like uh, a bar chart. We can see the difference uh, for every month of, of the, of, from, this, uh, from the 2097 uh, and 2096 years. At this stage, we will have a lot of data cubes uh, stored on the server side. So it is wise to, uh, before like uh, going to other notebooks to delete them. Uh, first of all, for uh, for let's say better under understanding what's what's uh, uh, understanding the set of data, the data cubes that we are managing, but also to uh, re release the the memory that we are using since this is, is inside the container. And this is quite limited. So once we run this and we check with the list, we see that basically there are no uh, more data cubes. So this this basically concludes the tutorial and the, wanted to give you, you some sort of um, a, a, a feeling of what can be done with Py of EA. If, if you would like to uh, try yourself, there are also other notebooks here that you can try to test maybe um, in the next days uh, to play a little bit with, uh, with the system. Um, so now before uh, closing the session, since I see we are uh, almost uh, at the end, I will check if there are uh, any, any questions and uh, then if we can close. Let me check, uh, okay, there's a question a few minutes ago. How much memory of can use in processing large volumes of data? Um, that, that's a very interesting question, but actually it depends on uh, the resources. Um, if, if you have, I don't know, like uh, many nodes that you can uh, dedicate to this, you can, you can process very big data set. We have done tests with uh, uh, multi-terabyte data sets. Uh, I, I think we've done some benchmark at least to eight, nine terabytes of, of, of data. And uh, of course, this was distributed on, um, on, on a very big number of, of, of nodes. Uh, but that's, I'd say, it's uh, limited just to the number of nodes that you can, uh, you can use for this, for this processing. And of course, uh, in most of the cases, you don't need even uh, to load uh, everything in, uh, in the memory from the beginning, but you can just in, uh, import the data, uh, run the operation that you need, and then drop the data cubes once they're, no, they're not needed anymore. And in the meantime, you can also load other data cubes from other files. 
we never going to this one because it's available online through the uh, I, I don't think you can use it through binder because you need uh, the uh, container uh, but as long as you have the docker container and the github repository you should be able to to run it uh, I don't think it can run just with binder because um, um, it needs the Ophidia uh, system to be executed. It doesn't just rely on uh, on uh, on Python modules, so you will need the environment to run this. But with the container, you can also you, as as long as you have a Docker instance in, uh, installed, that you can use it. I believe uh, uh, in any Linux system. Yes, you can install directly the image on your laptop. I, I did tested this with uh, with Linux, not sure for other systems, but it might work. <laughs> Everything is inside the, the container, you're not accessing anything else. And then, uh, and then you will need to get the notebooks and the data in a in a folder that you uh, bind with the, with, the note, with the container once this is started. Okay, I see there is a question which says Ophidia client support in case of problems. Um, okay, we have a documentation which is a, which is a very wide, so you can have a look here. There's uh, examples of the various uh, operators and primitives, and uh, or otherwise you can you can uh, you can contact us. I uh, left the uh, information about uh, with the emails for the Ophidia. Uh, Team on the on the on the slides that yeah, that you will, that you will receive. So if you have any 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 doubts, you can also contact us and uh, 